Hi guys. Come in. If you guys can hear me, can you type yes in the in the live chat window? Okay, you guys can hear me. Okay, thank you, Flight Pack Magazine. I can see that you guys can hear me. And uh, before we start, there may be like five to 10 seconds delay from me as a streamer, between me as a streamer and you guys as a watcher, because I chose the option where it allows me to um, show the video in high quality, but there's an inevitable delay due to that. So there may be like five to 10 seconds delay between you and me, but that wouldn't affect our interaction that much. Okay, you guys are typing yes. Okay, so all of you can hear me perfectly. And I hope that you guys did uh, finish the quiz that I gave out to you guys, the quiz number one and quiz number two based on the particles that we learned. I'm not sure how many of you finished the quiz, but it wouldn't matter that much, but it's more, I guess, preferable that you guys finished the quizzes. Before we go on to the quiz, uh, let's review, very, very briefly review all the particles that we learned so far. So first we learned E and ESO, which are time particle and place particle, right? And when E and ESO are placed after time noun, E means at, so at that time. So when you say Hanji E, it means at one o'clock, right? And you can, uh, ESO can also be placed after a time noun, but uh, in that case, it means from, and mostly it's followed by another particle, Kaji. So there's also another time noun. So when you say Hanji, oh, so this means till or to. So when you say Hanji ezo, it means from one o'clock, and Tushi kaji means till two. So Hanji ezo, Tushi kaji means from one to two o'clock. So that's how ezo can be placed after time noun. And they can also be placed after a place noun, right? And they both mean at when they are placed after a place noun, but remember that the following verbs are different. So e more indicates the presence, and eso more indicates um, the specific action taking place in that place. So we learn that with e, the verbs like itta, salda, chunjehada that indicates the presence of a noun of the subject can be can be followed. Um, but regarding e, when it's placed after a, a place noun, there are actually more verbs. So we learned that only the uh, basically only the present the, the verbs that indicate presence follows, but that's actually not true. So that is true, but then there's more. So these are all the verbs that can be followed after a particle when the place noun follows. So we're going to learn about this, not now, but I'm maybe going to do a separate video or live class on this just to focus on the verbs that can be placed after a. So um, you guys can, uh, we're, we're gonna do it another time, okay? But just so if you guys have question about it, like, oh, I saw verbs that don't mean presence, but it's put after a, then what is it? You know, so we're gonna do that um, soon. And is all also can be placed after a place noun and means at, and also a can mean to. So, when you say hakyu e kayo, it means I go to school, right? And to is usually removable as well. I mean, e is usually removable. And we also learned udo, right? Udo, when it's placed after a place noun, it has four meanings. So when the noun is direction, it means to that direction. And when a noun is place, 
it means to that place, but it's comparable with a particle because we learned, we just learned that a, also, I mean, not just learned, we learned it in our previous lessons, right? That a means to a place. So how was it different? Do you remember? So uro is more indicating you're moving to that place from some, somewhere else. And a is more like directly to that place and means we're just this is just a brief review so i'm not going to get into like details but if you have forgotten about a lot of the particles then you can check my previous lessons and it can also be used as a means of transportation or tool right so when you say um 연필로 연필로 썼어요 it means i wrote it with a pen or 지하철로 갔어요 means I got there, I went there by subway, right? And it can also be used as a choice marker. So whatever choice you made, you can it can be followed by lu particle to indicate that the noun is a choice. And this is the most recent lesson, lesson right? We learned it in our most recent lesson. 에게 한테 게, all three of them mean to and from. They have two meanings, right? And you can know which one of the meaning it has in that sentence by looking at the verb that comes after it, right? By looking at the context. And also, 게, so 게서 doesn't mean to and from. 게서 has another meaning and this is basically a subject marking particle, right? But the difference between the actual subject marking particle that we're most familiar with, which is iga, is that geso is an honorific form, right? So the person, the person noun that comes before geso should be the one that you're showing respect to, right? So this is an honorific form and ge is also an honorific form. Again, honorific form in that the person noun is someone that you should be showing respect to, right? So that's the difference between ege hante and ge and geso in that ege and hante are not honorific form. And we also learned lastly that when you say to an organization, like organization as in like guan, which means a library and uh, like huesa means company. So 도서관 and 회사 are not person, right? They're not individual. They are not an alive creature, right? So in this case, when you say 에게 to mean to, it's gonna sound weird because that way you're treating 도서관 and 회사 as if they are alive. So that doesn't make sense. So instead, you can replace 에게 with 에 to mean to, right? So when you say 도서관에 도서관에 전화했어요. 도서관에 전화했어요. It means I called to the library, right? But if you say you called a person, you can use 에게. 저는 엄마에게 전화했어요. Would mean I called to my mom. But when you're calling the the, the organization, the non-living organization, you can say 에. To me too. Okay, so that's the review. That was the review of all the particles that we learned. And now let's really begin the quiz. So, okay, let me put this note down. And quiz number, quiz number one. Okay, we're gonna look at the dialogue, the first dialogue first. Oh, sorry for the noise. Okay. So how many of you guys, oh, thank you, Tori. Seriously, you're so awesome for doing this. <laughs> thank you, thank you for joining. Okay, so I'm not sure how many of you, okay, let me zoom in a bit so that you can see this more clearly. Okay, I don't know how many of you finished this, but if you finished the quiz, can you type, I finished it, <laughs> so that I can like know how many of you actually check the quiz it doesn't really matter but then again it's it's more preferable that you finish it 안녕하세요 애틀란트 애틀란타에서 인사드립니다 hi hi 
Backers from Atlanta. It's in Georgia, right? <laughs> okay, so math, Corey, we finished it. Thank you. Oh, and there are a couple of more people who finished it. Okay, that's good. That's good. Thank you, guys. I love your, I love your spirit. You guys are all prepared. <laughs> I'm very proud of you. Okay, now I feel great. <laughs> so let's start. So dialogue number one. 우리 주말은 뭐 할까? So 우리 means we, right? We, 뭐 is a question word, right? What? And 할까 is a combination of 하다, do, and question form, 리을까. So what shall we do? What shall we do? On the weekend, 주말, we learned that this means weekend, right? And this is a time particle. Actually, I should bring the note back to, for reference. So this is a, 주말 is a time particle, right? So when you want to say in that time, at that time, you can use 에. So 주말에 뭐 할까? On the weekend, what shall we do? Right? And next one, B answers. 놀이공원 음, 가자. 가자 is a combination of the verb 가다, go, and 자, which means let's. So let's go. 놀이공원. 놀이공원 means theme park. So let's go to the theme park, right? So in this case, you can also use 에. But this 에 and this 에 are different, right? This means to and this means in that time, a time marking particle. And you may have question here. How about 으로? Is 루? Oh, sorry. So 니은 받침, it has 니은 받침. So if you want to put 루, it should be 으로. But is 으로 suitable here? It's actually not. Because you're more suggesting that we're going to the theme park. Like going to the theme park itself, right? Not going to the theme park from here, right? So it's talking about going to the theme park in general. So that's why 으루 here sounds a bit unnatural and 에 is the right one. And person A answers, 그래, 여기 음? 놀이공원 음? 얼마나 걸려? 얼마나 걸려? So we learned that 얼마나 means a lot of things, but it can also mean how long here. So you can memorize this expression all together. 얼마나 걸려? It means how long take. So it means how long does it take? So it would mean from here to theme park, how long does it take? And what is the equivalent particle for from and to? 여기? is all from here 놀이공원까지 right 여기에서 놀이공원까지 oh guys i forgot to tell you guys uh so so in our previous lesson we learned we also learned i forgot to write it here on our review note that as all when it's placed after a place noun it can also mean from right so, eso can be placed after a time noun and place noun to mean from, to indicate the range, right? To the range of time or place. So, eso means from. Eso also means from. So, 여기에서, from here to the theme park, how long does it take? And we also learn that eso can sometimes be abbreviated to just so. Right, so 여기에서 is fine and 여기서 is fine too. And person B says, 차 음, 한 시간 걸리고 지하철 음, 두 시간 정도 걸려. So 걸려, we just learned that this means take, like take time, right? And 정도 here means about. So when it's placed after time, hours, it means about that time. So 두 시간 here means two hours and 한 시간 means one hour. 
So it's, it means it takes an hour by car and it takes about two hours by a subway. Jiaochi meant subway, right? And ta means car. So for transportation, we learn that lu particle is used, right? For transportation, means of transportation. So that's why here lu should be added to indicate this is a means of transportation. And number five, A answers. 그러면 차, 음, 가자. 그러면 is also one of the conjunctions that we're going to learn later. But 그러면 here means then or if so. If so, let's go. We just learned this, right? Let's go by 차, car. So here as well, it's 로. 차로 가자. And 그래, 놀이공원. 음, 재미있게 놀자. So 재미있게 놀자. This expression is also something you can memorize all together. But to briefly break it down, so we just learned that 자, after, if it comes after a verb, means let's. And 놀, do you know where this verb comes from? 놀다 means to play. So literal meaning is let's play. 재미있게. 재미있다. We learned that this means fun or interesting, right? And by putting K here, it turns into an adverb. So it's interestingly or funly, in a fun way. So it means let's play in a fun way. So it means basically means let's have fun. Let's have fun. So it means let's have fun in the theme park. So having fun is a specific action, right? So here it's not a but a so. So 놀이공원 에서 재미있게 놀자 is the answer. Okay, so that's it for dialogue number one. And let me check the live chat window. I think I saw a good question. So Shangu Best Boy asks, can we use 으로 instead of 까지? Um, so I'm, I think you're talking about this th this part here. Can we use 으로 instead of 까지? Um, 여기에서 놀이공원... Uh, actually, no, no. 으로 doesn't work here. Uh, uh, okay, so that's a really good question. Changu best boy. It's, it's a really good question. But, um, and it's very understandable that you can confuse 으로 and 까지. Um, but here, 까지 makes more sense because um, it's, it, it, it's not saying you are moving from here to theme park. It's more like the range. It's, uh, he's asking about how long it takes from here to theme park, the range, right? And when you're setting the range of time or place, then 까지, this particle should be placed to mean to or till the ending point, right? So that's why 으로 here wouldn't make sense. Is that clear? Okay, so that's, that's it for dialogue number one. And um, I, these last two questions in the dialogue one, I put it because um, I wanted to check if you remember after a place noun, I mean, sorry, the time noun, uh, we, uh, we learned that a is put, right? But not all time, part time, time nouns, right? So time nouns like 어제, 오늘, or 내일, which means yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we don't have to put any particle to indicate the time. It can just be used on its own to mean in yesterday, in today, and in tomorrow. Like we're going to do it tomorrow, right? So no particle is used after these time nouns. Okay, and um, 뭐 했어요? We, we, we know that 했어요 is the past verb of 하다, which means 
do and Hesayo did. So what did you do yesterday? And what yeah Obviously, this is a future tense, right? So will do. Today, what will do? What will you do today, right? Okay, and moving on to the second dialogue of quiz one. Second dialogue. All right. And it starts with the sentence that we just finished off the dialogue one with, right? 내일 뭐 할까? So we just learned that after 내일, tomorrow, no particle is needed, right? 뭐 할까? 하다 plus 릴 got the question form. So what shall we, what shall we do tomorrow? What shall we do tomorrow? 내일 뭐 할까? Uh, will you post this live on your page afterwards? Yes, yes. Um, the full live class will be up, so please don't worry if you have to like go somewhere in the middle of this class because it will be saved. And 수영장, 음, 수영하자. So there's a lot of 자 expression, right? So it's, you won't forget. Let, it means let, right? And 수영하 comes from 수영하다 which means to swim. So let's swim. 수영, swim pool, swimming pool. Let's swim in the swimming pool, right? So swimming is a specific action. So here, 에서 is the right particle, not 에. And 그래, okay, 어디 갈까? 어디 갈까? So it, it, uh, without any particle, 어디 갈까 itself makes sense, right? It means, where shall we go? However, in this context, uh, she is not curious, curious about where shall they go because they're already decided on going to the swimming pool, right? So in this context, A should be asking to which swimming pool they shall go. So in this case, they are talking about the choice. 어디 is a choice, right? Oh, oh sorry guys, <laughs> what's happening with my tripod? All right, okay, Let's make it more stable. Okay, so 어디로 갈까 is a choice and it implies amongst other pools, where or which one shall we go, right? And 한남동 음 좋은 곳 하나 있어. 한남동 음 좋은 곳이 하나 있어. So let's look at the verb here. It's 있어, right? 있어. Be verb, right? There is. So, oh, oh, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. It has nothing to do with this verb. Sorry, guys. Oh, I was confused myself. No, 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 it, it, it matters. Oh gosh, sorry. After the tripod broke down, I got kind of mentally confused myself. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, it matters. So, uh, it's a verb. So, 좋은 곳 means good place. Good place, one. So, it means there is one good place in Hanamdong. There is one good place in Hanamdong. And here, a particle should be used to mean in Hanamdong because of the verb that indicates presence, right? So we learned that a, oh, let me zoom out a bit to make it big. So we learned that at is placed uh, sorry, e is placed after a place now when the verb, when the following verb indicates the presence, right? And for is a specific action. So by is the verb, we can know that, oh, it means presence. So Hanamdong, in Hanamdong, there is a good place. And 거기, 음, 가자. 거기, there. 거기로 가자. 거기로. Because 거기 is a choice. They, they made a choice to go there. So let's go there. 그래, okay. 민서도 가면 좋은데. 
민서도 가면 좋은데. Okay, so 도 is a particle that we haven't learned yet. It has several other meanings, but one of them is also. So also means how? Means like. Uh, so 가면 좋은데 here is an expression that you can memorize uh, wholly. So when you say verb 면 좋은데. So 면 here comes from 그러면. 그러면. We, uh, 그러면. 그러면. Oh, we learned about the conjunction 그러면 in our first dialogue, right? It means then or if so. And that 면 comes from this 면. So it means if go. If go, it would be good. So if 민서 also goes, it would be good. 민서도 가면 좋은데. 민서도 가면 좋은데. 내가 민서 응? 물어볼게. So 물어볼게 here is also a good expression. It's a combination of 물어. Okay, let me write it with a different pen, more thicker one. 물어보다, which means ask, and 리을받침. Okay, so this looks familiar, right? It kind of looks like the future tense. 리을받침 거야, which means will, will ask. But the difference between 리을 거야 and 리을 게 is that this is just a plain statement of your plan in the future. Like, I will do it. But 리을 게 is more like, like, let me do it. Let me do the verb or I'll do the verb. Kind of like that. So it means let me ask. Let me ask. 민서. So to ask, you have to ask to 민서, right? So 민서 is a person. And when you ask to a person, you can say 한테 or 에게, right? But like we learned, 한테 is used more in spoken Korean, right? So since this is a dialogue, they're speaking, I think 한테 would suit more. So, 민서한테 물어볼게. And one question here. Is 게, does 게 suit here after 민서? 민서 게 물어볼게? Because we learned that 게 also has the same meaning of 한테. So, is it right to put 게 here? No, right? Because 게 is an honorific form and 민서 is your friend, obviously, right? They're calling by their, by their um, first name, so it's clear that Minsa is their friend. So, ge is not natural here. Hante is the right one. Um, please explain this again. Math QWERTY, uh, which, which one? C could you tell me which one you need explanation on? This part, Minsa Hante. So this is what we learned in our very recent class, right? It was posted 12 hours ago, so chances are not many of you have checked that video. But um, in, our, uh, in our review session, at the very beginning, we learned that ege and hante, if placed after a person, means two or from sometimes. And to tell which meaning something has, you can look at the context, right? You can look at the verb used. And here, 물어보다 is to ask, right? And to ask, you have to ask to someone, right? Last one, yes, last one, okay. Ask to a person, right? So, 한테 or 에게 can be used both to mean to here. And Binsa is a person, so when you say to a person, either hante or ege is used. They basically mean the same thing, but like I said, hante is used more often in spoken form. 그냥 계속 하세요. Okay, um, okay, so I wouldn't be able to like answer every single question, but um, if you are confused in the middle of uh this video then i think you can check the uploaded video afterwards no no it's okay it's okay you don't have to be sorry i understand particles are very very 
um, difficult to get, right, at first. So it's okay, but it will come in time. So hang in there, guys, hang in there. And moving on to the second half of the, this dialogue. So B suggests she ask Min Seo, and calling Min Seo, they're calling Min Seo, and she asks, Min Seo ya, Min Seo ya. You put ya after a name to call someone, right? Min Seo ya, 내일 같이 수영장 응 갈래? Min Seo ya, 내일 같이 수영장 응 갈래? 가 plus 리얼 네, suggesting, right? Oh, I zoomed in too much. So let's. This is okay, right? Uh, okay. 갈래? Shall it's uh, it's like suggesting that they. Uh, it's it's like asking if you want to go too. 갈래? 내일 같이 tomorrow together 수영장 응 갈래? And do you want to go to the swimming pool? And yes, many of you are getting it right. Eh, right? Because you're going to the swimming pool. And Min Seo says, 그래, okay. 우리 엄마, 음, 같이 갈게. So 우리, we learned that 우리 means we or our, but it's also a friendly way to say my. So 우리 엄마, can sometimes mean our mom, but it's Min Seo alone who's speaking, right? So in this case, it means my mom. 우리 엄마, 응, 같이 갈게. So I put this particle, although it's not one of the 에, 에서, 에게, and 으로, just to kind of, just for more challenge, I guess. So 같이 갈게, we'll go together with my mom. So for with, you can say 랑. Right? Or you can also say hagu and you can also say wa. So lang, hagu, wa, all three particles mean the same thing with or and. But here it means with, with my mom. And also lang and hagu are used more often than wa in spoken form because wa kind of sounds like a book. Like you're talking in a book, but lang and hagu are used more often when you're speaking in real life. So, 엄마랑 같이 갈게. And, hey, um, okay, hanging up. And person B says, 민서 어머니 응, 같이 오신대. So, 같이 means together, right? 같이 means together. And here, so this is not the sentence ending that we learned yet, but this is basically a combination of 오시다 and 대, right? So 오시다, we learned that this is an honorific verb, and by placing 니은 박침 대, it's a sentence ending that indicates you are reporting what you heard from somewhere or from someone else. So, 오신데, like I heard, will come. I heard come. So, it's it's kind of like reporting what you heard. So, will come. Uh, so, 민서 어머니, 민서's mother, will come together. So, here, 민서 어머니 is the subject of the sentence, right? And at the same time, the person that you should be showing respect to. So here, 깨서 should be used. Uh, I, I, I can see that you guys have different answers in the comment section, and it's completely understandable because 랑 here actually works too, and 두 works as well. And because it can also, depending on what, you actually, what the person B actually meant, uh, it can change, right? So, 민서 어머니랑 같이 오신... Oh, actually, no, 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 sorry, sorry. 랑 doesn't work here. 랑 doesn't work here, guys, because of the verb here. You see? 오시다 is an honorific verb, right? It's an honorific verb. So, the subject should be someone that you should show respect to. 
So the subject is not 민서. Subject is not 민서. Subject is 민서 어머니. So when you say 민서 어머니랑 같이 오신데, it means 민서 is coming with her mom, right? But this coming is obviously 민서 어머니 coming, not 민서 coming because this is an honorific form. Are you guys getting it? Okay, okay, you guys are, some of you guys are getting it. So here, 깨서 is a more correct one. And 두 can actually work too. We learned that 두 means also. So 민서 어머니 also will come. So that's why here 깨서 is more correct one. And 두 works too. Okay, and A says, 그래, 내시서 신나게 놀자. 내시서 신나게 놀자. And, okay, so, I'm not sure if it's visible to you right now because of the black ink. 신나게 놀자. Do you remember 재미있게 놀자? What 재미있게 놀자 meant? Where is the first page? Oh, here. 재미있게 놀자. It meant let's have fun, right? And 신나게 놀자 mean the same thing. So 신나다 means exciting. So excitingly, let's play. So they both mean let's have fun. So let's have fun, the four of us. 내시서, the four of us. 응, 내일. And you don't need any particle here. And 민서, 어머니, 응. 맛있는 음식을, 응, 응. <laughs> so this means I will give delicious food, 맛있는 음식, to means us mother. So for two, which one should be placed? Ge, right? So 한테 and 에게 also mean two. And it wouldn't be entirely wrong to say 한테 and 에게 here, but it means us mother, right? And she's showing respect to her mother. So ge should be placed as an honorific form of 한테 and 에게. 맛있는 음식을 is it 줄 거야 or 드릴 거야? We learned about this tons of time, right? But it's it's still gonna confuse uh, some of you because it is hard. But um, 드릴 거야 is the right verb, right? So 드리 from 드리다, give, and the future tense, will, give. But 드리다, unlike 주다, honors, I mean, shows respect to the receiver, right? And the receiving party is means as mother whom you should be showing respect to. So with 게 and 드릴 거야, this sentence is a perfect um, honorific sentence to show respect to means as mother. 한국어 너무 어려워요. <laughs> yes, yes, I understand your struggle. I think Korean is not an easy language to learn, right? Because as a native speaker, you just you just know it, right? But for learners, I think it's it, it would be very, very challenging. But I don't think it's impossible. Like there are many uh, people who are at an advanced level of Korean, right? And they, I'm sure they work very hard for it. So you guys can do it, right? It's not impossible. I got seven out of 12. It's okay. It's, it doesn't matter how many uh, questions you got right or wrong. Uh, what matters is that you, you correct your mistake, right? And then learn, right? So that you don't make um, mistakes next time. But that doesn't mean you should never make mistakes. You, you guys getting what I'm saying? <laughs> so practice, 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 review, right? Okay, and moving on to translation quiz, the hardest part, right? Oh, okay, but we're gonna do it. What did you do in the afternoon? What did you do in the afternoon? So for afternoon, you can say 오후, 오후. Um, and there is no such word like before noon in English, right? But in Korean, we do have it, which is 오전, 오전. So um, for a brief vocabulary, 후 is a sign of Korean word that means after, and 전, 
as a sinocrine word that means before. I'm not sure what u exactly means, but um, so udon means before noon and uhu means afternoon. So that's how you can remember these words. So before noon as in like morning, morning. So uhu. So uhu in the afternoon, which particle should you use? Uhu. A time particle at the afternoon. In the afternoon, uhu e. Bo. What did? Bo hesayo. This one's kind of. Uh, this one's maybe the easiest, right? Among the eight. Uhu e bo hesayo. And second one. Moving right on to the second one. What did you eat at the restaurant? So restaurant is um, so there's a word, pure Korean, not pure Korean word. It's a Sino Korean word, but there's a Korean word, shikdang. So shik is a Sino Korean word for eat, and tang is a word placed uh, in a vocabulary that means place. So it means eating eating place, shikdang. So you can say shikdang, but we also say restaurant. The difference between these two are that restaurant sounds fancier. So it's it refers to place that are more like fancy than just plain shikdang. So that's the difference. But um, here, let's just go with shikdang. Shikdang. Which particle should be used? For at the restaurant, by looking at the verb eat, it's a specific action, right? So you eat at the restaurant, so you do something specific. So this time you place eso. 식당에서 뭐 먹었어요? 뭐 먹었어요? 먹다's past form, right? And moving on to three, I went to school by uh, fancy so yeah fancy as in like uh, it's a it's a it's a big place not like a small place to it you know what i mean congress yes restaurant is congress <laughs> and number three i went to school by taxi so here there are two particles you can use i went to school so let's write text by taxi first because it's an adverb. So adverbs are placed at the front part of the sentence in Korean, right? So taxi is a means of transportation, right? So you can say taxi ru. So math Cordy, yes, your answer is perfectly right. Taxi ru hakyu e kasayo, right? Taxi ru hakyu e kasayo. It's a means of transportation and e to school went because a eh, because you're going to a school right and another way to say taxi ru is taxi ta gu so it might take some time to explain how it's ta gu but it's basically a combination of ta da and ku so ta da means to get on a vehicle or get on it can also mean get on an animal like get on a get on a horse but so tagu means by riding, so by riding taxi, so with taxi, right? So taxi ru and taxi tagu both are fine. But if you want to use particle instead of verb, you can use ru. But if you want to use the verb ride, you can say tagu. Taxi tagu hakue kasayo. And how long does it take from Seoul to Busan? So let's write Seoul from. Uh, from Seoul to Busan first. So, Seoul from which which one should be used? Seoul is Seoul. So Seoul, Seoul is the starting point, right? And Seoul indicates the starting point. The noun is the starting point from. So from Seoul, Busan. Kaji, right? So when it comes to place, eso and kaji are used to indicate the range, right? 
the range. So 서울에서 부산까지 is correct. We, we learned that 으로 should 으로 is not correct here, right? It's 까지 because when you want to again when you want to set a, a range like show the range of place or even time you have to use 까지 not 으로, right? So from Seoul to Busan, 얼마나 걸려요? How long does it take, right? 얼마나 걸려요? You can remember this phrase all together. 얼마나 걸려요? 얼마나 걸려요? So in the comment section, I see that James commented, 서울부터 부산까지 어떻게 가요? But 어떻게 가요 means how go. So how do I go from Seoul to Busan? So in this, in this sentence, it means how long does it take, right? So 얼마나 걸려요 is the right verb. Um, can we use 부터? Uh, 서울부터 부산까지? Hmm. 서울부터. Um, 부터. Uh, it, I, I, I get, uh, so by hearing that, I would understand what it means, but it doesn't sound natural. So, 서울부터 부산까지. Uh, so, 부터, this particle is used more as a starting point of time. But not so much place. So puto sounds more natural when it when it comes after a time noun, but not in the place now. So sol puto sounds a bit unnatural. So when it comes to place, you're, when it comes to showing the range of place, eso and gazi is more. It's more natural. It's more correct. And moving on to. Uh, my teacher wasn't at school. Uh, okay, what? I'm trying to fold it neatly, but I failed. <laughs> There's like two messy lines here, but I hope you understand. So my teacher wasn't at school. So Tongbang Minju wrote, 선생님이 학교에 없어요. Okay, so this isn't wrong. This is correct. 선생님이 학교에 없어요. But here, I want to be... Um, so let's make it into a honorific form. The proper honorific form. So, 선생님이... This is a subject marking particle, right? And we learned another subject marking particle that is in an honorific form. Do you remember? Geso, right? Geso. We learned it here, right? It's an honorific form of e or ka. So, 선생님께서 학교에 없어요. So, 없어요 means to not be, right? So, 있어요 means to be somewhere, and 없어요 would be the opposite of that. So, it's not be. So, this is right. But you can also say, 없으세요. You can make it into a 세요 verb to show respect to the subject of the sentence, right? And you can also say, actually, this is what I intended uh, initially. 학교에 안 계세요. Oh, 악강인. Okay, 악강인. Your answer is... Almost correct, almost correct, because you should replace, uh, it's not 게, it's 게서. So, 선생님께서 학교에 안 계세요 would be correct. But really, good job with the with this verb. So, it means you remember 계세요 verb, right? So, 계세요 is an honorific form of 있다. So, when you say someone is somewhere, instead of saying 있다, 있으세요, you can say 계세요. Right? Um, if you uh, this is this is kind of confusing and it takes a lot of time to uh, explain in detail about how KSAU works, the ITA's honorific form. So you can check the the second lesson, the part two lesson of SEU ending on my channel. Um, so so yes, that's how you can say Hakue Angeseu to mean wasn't at school. And one more thing, we learned that an if put, if put before a verb, it's a negation, right? 
So an geseo means not not there, not there. All right. So this one's kind of hard. And let's meet next month. Let's meet next month. Oh, you guys. Okay, so that's a nice question. Isn't opsayu a present verb? Okay, that's a really good question, guys. Wow. Wow, you guys are very smart. Yes, so you're right. You're right. Actually, I was wrong, kind of, because this is wasn't at, right? Because this is a past form. But let me just fix it to isn't. <laughs> okay, isn't. And that would be a correct answer, right? But if you want to go with the past form, you can say 없었어요 or 안 계셨어요, right? 안 계셨어요. So 새우 ending verb can be quite confusing as we go further. So we'll just leave it at this, number five. This was the hardest part. And number six, let's meet next month. Let's meet next month. So for next month, I am not sure how many of you know this word, but Alexandria, yes, 다음 달에, yes, yes, 다음, 달. So when you say next month or next week, you use, so month, for months we use 달, and for week we use 주, and for next we say 다음. So when you say 다음 주, it means next week, 다음 달, next month. So 다음 달, this is a time noun, right? So at that time, in English, at that time, right? So 다음 달에, e should be placed for time particle. 다음 달에 만나요, 만나요. Or if you want to be like more correct with answer, and say the exact let's meet, you can say 만나자, 만나자. But the, the difference between two is that this one is 반말, because 자 ending is usually 반말, oh, all the time it's 반말, whereas 만나요 is 존댓말. So if, if you're talking to a person whom you shouldn't be using 반말 to, then you can go with 만나요. And if you are talking to your friend or someone that you're really close with, you can say 만나자. And number seven, I gave a pencil to the teacher. I gave a pencil pencil to the teacher. So to the teacher. How do you say to the teacher? 아까 mean answer is 선생. Oh, it's 선생. Oh, <laughs> it's 선생님께. 선생님께. So I think. There was a typo on your part, right? I, I think you already know it's something new. So when you just say something, <laughs> it's gonna sound kind of rude. Yeah. So something, it, kind of, it sounds kind of rude. So you have to put "nim" to mean teacher. To the teacher, okay, an honorific form of "hante" and "ege," right? Which means to. Something new, okay. Sorry, guys. I, I need a sip of tea first. You should say 드리다 verb, right? So 드리다's past form is 연필을 드렸어요. And Alexandria, 저는 선생님의 연필을 줬어요. 저는, um, 저는, so if you say 저는 선생님의 연필을 줬어요, E shouldn't be placed after a person noun, right? So when you say you're giving something to a noun, you should go with ege or hante, right? But here, 선생님 is someone you should be showing respect to, right? So you can replace ege and hante with ge, which basically mean the same thing, but this one is an honorific form. So you should say 선생님 ge 연필을 드렸어요. And you can, if you want to put the particle, I mean, not particle, the subject, me, I, you can also put 저는. But without it, we, we learned that subjects are removable if it's obvious. 
So when you are saying this sentence, it's obvious that the subject is me, right? I am giving the pencil to the teacher. So you can remove the subject or with or without it, it's fine. And next one, give it to me, please. Give it to me, please. So I put these two at the last part to compare 드리다 and 주세요, which we learn in our 세요 ending. So do you remember the difference? 드리다, like we learned, shows respect to the receiver, right? And 주세요, oh sorry, it should be 주시다. So 주세요 is the present verb of 주시다, right? So we're comparing the base verb. So 주시다 is showing respect to the giver, right? So when you say give some, give it to me, please, it's showing respect to you, the person that I am asking it to give it to me, right? So you're showing respect to the giver. So in this case, you should go with 주시다 verb, not 드리다 verb, because the receiver here is you, and you cannot show respect to yourself. That will kind of sound weird. So you're respecting the giver. So in this case, you should say 주세요, the present verb of 주시다. 주세요. Give it to me, please. How do you say to me? To me. To me. Okay. 저, right? And which particle should be used after 저? 저에게 주세요. Yes. Amy. Yes. 저에게 or 저한테 is correct too, right? But not 게 because you cannot use 게 after me because showing respect to yourself that would kind of sound weird. So 저에게 주세요 or 저한테 주세요 would be fine. 저거 주세요. 이거 주세요. Oh, I can see that you guys actually translated it here, right? Um, actually, it's not really necessary if that it is obvious. But if you want to be like more specific with the object, then you can put, um, for example, give the pencil to me. Then you can specify the object and say 연필을 주세요. But here, um, I, I kind of imagine the context where it, the object, would be obvious. So that's why the object is removed here. I hope that makes sense. So one another confusing thing about Korean sentences is that subject and object are sometimes removable, right? And it would be quite confusing when to remove it and when not. But uh, if something is obvious, then it can be removed because it's considered redundant every time you specify the subject and the object. Does that make sense, guys? Why Thai for month and not why? Okay, so that is a great question, but uh, it's gonna take like a very long time to, not very long time, but it's gonna take some time to explain that. Or maybe that's a, just an excuse. I currently don't know how to explain it well. <laughs> so I will mm, probably make a video on that separately, but mm, when you're saying what month is it, you go with 월, right? So 1월 means you, uh, it, it means January and 12월 means February. But when you say month as in like this month, next month or last month, you go with 달. So I don't really know why. That's just how maybe the Korean vocabulary works. But if I figure it out, I will try to make a video on it. And... Wow, so we finished the first quiz and it's already been an hour. Thank you so much for staying with me. It's, so for today's class, there are many viewers, like more viewers compared to like other times. And wow, thank you very much, guys. I am glad you are following this class well. And for 
quiz number two. You guys have this quiz too, right? Did you guys print this out as well? There's only like three questions here, so it wouldn't take too much time. So first one, what is the right particle to be used here? 라면은 젓가락 음 먹고 밥은 숟가락 음 먹어요. So 라면 means so 라면 kind of sounds like ramen, ramen, which is Japanese food, and ramen in Japanese food is is a it's kind of a big dish, like it's 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 a cuisine. But ramen is different because ramen is just an instant noodle. It just means instant noodle, the cheap one that you can get at like the convenience store. So ramen means that, and pop. We learn that this has two meaning. It, first, it has a meaning of rice and also meal, but here it means rice. So ramen. So here we can see the subject marking particle, right? And what it does here is um, it serves as a topic marker, topic marking particle. So it kind of means when it comes to. So when it comes to ramen, we eat it with chokarak. Chokarak means chopstick. So uro should be placed. And do you know why? Because uro, like we learned, also marks the tool, right? And chopstick here is a tool that you eat ramen with, right? So ramen and chokaraguru makku. We eat or I eat ramen with chopsticks. And as for pop, as for rice, sukarak uru bogoyo. Sukarak means spoon. So spoon and sukara kind of sound similar, just this part, but um, spoon means sukara, uh, sukara means spoon, and chokara means chopstick. So that's how, uh, that's why uru is used. And please publish this live session for us to review. Yes, um, the whole live class will be uploaded right after uh, the class is finished, so don't worry about it, guys. And next question. Does this dialogue sound natural? And taxi, 기사. So we learned that taxi means taxi. 기사 means it has a lot of meaning, but first meaning is driver. So taxi driver says, 손님, 어디로 갈까요? And 손님 answers, 한남동으로 가주세요. 학교에 가려고요. So 손님 means a customer. And we use 손님 to call a customer. So calling a customer 손님 doesn't sound rude in Korean. So 손님, customer, 어디로 갈까요? So here, do you think 로 is the right particle to be used here? If so, which meaning among these four does this do have, do you think? 어디로 갈까요? So this is a bit tricky to, to, to choose because um, it can mean both place and choice. Because 어디로 갈까요? So when you get into a taxi, there are like a lot of options to which you will go. Right? So among those other places, where do you want to go? It means that. So ru can function as a choice particle here, but it can also mean to, I guess. So from here to where shall we go? Because they're in a taxi, right? Because So they're getting to somewhere from here. So it means both that, but um, it's not really that significant, right? Uh, what matters is you understand 어디로 갈까요? As in a question asking like which place to which place do you want to go? And 가다, 갈까요? is obviously a combination of to go and 가요, shall we go? Like do you want to go? 손님 answers 한남동으로 가주세요. 학교에 가려고요. So 
it has two particles here. And do you think they are used in the right place? They actually are. They actually are. So all these dialogue sounds natural. Hannamdong is a name of a town, right? Hannamdong으로 가주세요. Um, so this verb is a combination of 가 and 주세요. And this is also something that we're going to learn another time. So when you say verb, the present verb, 주다, it's like requesting someone to verb. So by changing 주다 to 주세요, it's a polite way to ask someone to do the verb. So we're going to learn it another time in, in more detail. But so, so it means please, please go. Please do me a favor and go. 가주세요. 한남동으로. So 한남동 is a choice that 손님 made, right? So 한남동으로 가주세요. Or as I told you, it can also mean to, right? So to Hannamdong, from here to Hannamdong, please go. So like I said, um, 으로 here, uh, uh, it's more important that you understand that 로 sounds natural because they're in a taxi and they're going to somewhere from here and it can also be a choice. So, so yes, now that I, think about it it's kind of a tricky dialogue but um yeah that kind of proves how uro particle can be very versatile in its usage right so just understanding that it's place after a place now to mean two and choice now to mean this is a choice would be enough okay 한남동으로 가주세요 학교에 가려고요 so, 가려고요. So, if you say verb, 려, oh, is it too big? The, the screen is too big. Verb, 고요려고요. It means I am planning to do V. So, it's like stating your immediate plan, kind of like that. So, it means I and planning to go to school, so I'm going to school. So here, a is the right particle because uh, in this context, you're emphasizing you're going to school, right? Not from here to school, but you're, the school is the final destination that you're going to, right? So 학교에 가려고요. I'm planning to go to school. So please go to 한남동. So this is a completely natural dialogue. If 학생 is rich, <laughs> then dialogue is natural. Ah, yeah, yeah. So Hanamdong is famous for uh, the rich like apartments there, but not all people who live in Hanamdong are rich. <laughs> and choice and not direction. Uh, so, so like I like I said, it can mean both. It can mean both, right? So. So the problem, I guess, one, one drawback of grammar class is that sometimes uh, it, some things are breakdownable, but sometimes it's not. It's just something that you get through the context. Do you know what I mean? I think I'm bad at explaining this particular law, but it both mean, okay, so let's go it this way. It both mean choice and direction, choice and direction, okay? Does that make sense? I'm in grade six and I'm also learning Korean. Wow, you're in grade six and you're also you're already learning um, the second language. That's great. And Adin Akbar, I have actually checked your Instagram message and I haven't responded back to it yet. I'm so sorry. Um, I was kind of being lazy on Instagram and I haven't been checking uh, more than I guess like ten messages, but. I promise I will get back to you on it because I know you've been sending me messages for quite some time, right? And I'm sorry, I haven't gotten back to you. But um, I will get back to you within today, Adin Akbar, okay? And uh, this is our last question, guys. So what are the right particles to be used in each blank? 
우리 오늘 아웃백 음 가자. 우리 오늘 아웃백 음 가자. So 가자, let's go. Today, let's go to Outback. So you guys know what Outback Steakhouse is, right? And instead of saying Outback Steakhouse, we just say Outback to mean Outback Steakhouse. So here, which particle should be used? Outback? A, yes. A. I can see that. Uh, okay. And because they're, they're suggesting they go to Outback, right? The Outback is their final destination. They want to go. And B answers. Kure. Okay. To which one shall we go? To which one shall we go? Odi n kaika. Odi ru. And this marks the choice, right? This marks the choice because. It implies among all, among many outbacks out there, which one shall we go, right? So this Audi uh, can mean which one, right? It's directly translated as where, but in this context, it means where, uh, which one. And A answers, 강남, 음, 가자. 강남, which one? 으로, 가자. Right? Because if you say 강남에 가자, it means let's go to Gangnam. Like Gangnam is your final destination. So you guys are going to Gangnam. Let's go to Gangnam. But 강남으로 가자 would mean Gangnam is a choice. So it means let's go to the one in Gangnam. Right? So this one is 으로. Are you guys getting it? So. I can see that some of you commented Uru and some of you commented E. Or is it, is it delay? So like I told you guys in the beginning, there is like five to 10, to 10 seconds delay between you and me, like me as a streamer and you as watcher, there's like five to 10 seconds delay. So it's not like 100% real time. You guys are probably a few seconds behind. So that's why the comments are being shown late to me. Uh, but anyways, that is it for our today's lesson. So we looked at all the quiz number one and quiz number two, and we got to review all the particles that we learned so far, right? And this class, kind of went smooth compared to the last one so i'm very happy it did and it's all thanks to you guys who um who finished the quiz and were very active during class so thank you guys so much for it and let me check um some of your questions am i missing anything okay so uh so yes i will wrap this lesson up and oh like i told you guys in the beginning uh there are like more verbs that can be placed after a when it's a place particle and i'm going to do maybe like a live class or a separate video on it so you guys can meet me there i'm thinking of going on going live tomorrow with this but i'm not sure so i will let you guys know but um for now for today um uh, let's wrap the lesson up and thank you guys so much for joining for being active for making me happy being enthusiastic uh, you guys make me proud as a teacher <laughs> and i will see you in the next live class or next video wherever on my channel and bye guys bye bye bye